Hey guys, let's get straight to the point. So I just got myself a Fujifilm X-Pro2 second hand. So that's why I want to reset the camera and set it up as the way I like it. So I might as well just make a video to show you guys how I set up my Fujifilm cameras and hopefully it will help you to set up yours as well. First of all, most of the Fujifilm camera has similar software. So that's why it should be similar when it comes to setting up your Fujifilm camera, even when the interface look probably different if it's an older camera, but this should look pretty similar to the latest one, which is similar to the X-T4 that I had before. So let's get started. The first thing, of course, set the language and you will jump straight into the camera. This is the default setting of everything. So let's go into the menu to take a look and see what we can set up. For image size, nowadays, SD cards are pretty cheap, so usually I will leave it at the largest format. They have different format and aspect ratio. 16 by 9, it's like a TV ratio if you want to take pictures. Let's say for YouTube thumbnail, I would suggest you to keep it at 16 by 9 so you don't have to worry about having too much stuff at the top and the bottom and you have to crop it later. But I'll keep it at 3 by 2 large. Image quality, I always keep it as fine and plus raw because I do want to have the flexibility to edit the raw files after I've taken the picture and I want the JPEGs to be as high quality as possible. Fujifilm JPEGs, as I said in my other videos, they look amazing. So you can directly publish those on social media with no problem at all. But I like to have the flexibility. So it's gonna be fine plus raw. Raw recording, this one, you have uncompressed and lossless compressed. For me, based on my experience, the quality, it's not that big of a difference. So usually I will shoot at lossless compressed because it saves a lot of space compared to uncompressed. So that's just me, but if you want all the pixels, all the quality, I really don't think there's a difference, uh, at least by my experience and looking with my bare eyes, I don't see a difference, but you can go with uncompressed, but I'll go with lossless compressed. Film simulation, you can change that later uh, based on the software version that you have. You might have more simulations than mine on the X-Pro2. Uh, if you have the X-T4, you should have something like uh, negative, no, classic neg and eterna, but this one doesn't have it. But we won't touch that because you can change that on the go when you are taking pictures. Grain effect, I usually leave it off for now so I don't see grain when I'm taking the photo on the spot, but I can add it in later. Dynamic range, I usually keep it at 100%. Uh, if I really want to play around with the dynamic range, let's say I want a little bit more information on the highlight, I would change it. But I leave it at DR100 just for most of my pictures, so I don't touch that. White balance, I leave it at auto most of the time, but what I usually would do depends on the scene. I will go into white balance shift and try to adjust the color using this graph right here. Let's say if I want a warmer fall kind of color, I'll go to the bottom right to make it a little bit more orangey. But if I want something cooler, let's say for a rainy day, I can go to the top left. So it depends on your need but I'll leave it in the center for now. So white balance, I always keep it as auto. If you are doing, let's say, a paid job taking photos for someone who, who's paying you, you might want to set the white balance to something, let's say, uh, at a certain level of uh, Kelvin. That is because you want the same or at least the most consistent white balance among all your photos, or else like it might jump between like cool or warm because of the clouds and the sunlight and reflections and everything. So you might want to set a specific white balance when you're doing a page job. That's just a suggestion. Highlight tone, shadow tone, I don't touch it. I just want to keep the picture as neutral as possible. When I'm taking it, I can do that in the raw conversion after I've taken the raw photo. So it's okay for now. I made another video showing you guys how to use the raw conversion on Fujifilm cameras. That is one of my favorite features from Fujifilm camera. You basically can edit your photos without using Lightroom or Photoshop. 
straightly from the camera and you can just export it. So that's uh, another video. I will link the video in the description below. Color, I usually will set it to negative one just to make it less saturated, but it's again, it's your personal preference. Sharpness on Fujifilm cameras depends on the sensor you have. For my X-E2, I feel like that one, you can definitely bump it up to level. There's only two level plus and two net, uh, level down for um, X-E2 with the X-Trans 2 sensor, but this one has the Trans 3 sensor, so you can go all the way up to plus four, but I don't think I need it for this sensor, so I'll leave it at zero. But again, if you want it to be sharper, you can do that in raw conversion. Noise reduction, I always leave it to negative four, like the max you can go down with, because I really don't want the camera to make the noise go to go away, to make the image go really mushy and unclear. That is because, as I said in my other videos, Fujifilm cameras, even if you take pictures in extreme low light, the noise that you see, they don't look like noise. They look more like film grain because they're not color noise most of the time for Fujifilm camera unless you push it really hard. So I usually leave it at negative four if I really, really want to reduce the noise for whatever reason, again, raw conversion or Photoshop Lightroom. Long exposure NR, I don't do that many long exposure shots. So I usually will just leave it off anyway. Uh, lens module optimizer, I, to be honest with you, I don't really know what this is. I think this is for older cameras to adapt to newer lenses. So just leave it on. Color space, sRGB. Pixel mapping, I think this is for you to reset the pixels on the camera. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section below because I don't touch these because I don't need to touch them when I am shooting my style. So I don't touch those options. So whatever you don't see me change here in this video, that means I don't need to change them for my style of shooting. Select custom setting. This is for you to basically set up different Fujifilm settings for different purposes. So you can have standard, uh, you can have different simulation setup and different sharpness, um, color, and highlight tone, shadow tone setup in profiles for quick access. I'm not gonna touch that today because that's gonna take forever. Edit, save custom settings, same thing. This is to select them. This is to edit and save them. So that's, that's it for the image quality. Focus area, I usually will use the dial to adjust it to somewhere reasonable, like not the smallest, definitely, because like it's really, really hard to nail focus if you want to set your focus point that tiny. I'll use it maybe around like this. So I can have, let's say a full body portrait, I can still have this box basically highlighting the person or the subject's face or the head. So that's that. Focus mode, this depends on what you're doing. So I usually use single point if you want to use zone or wide tracking for street photography, that's fine too. But because I do a lot of portraits, so I use single point. AFC custom settings, this one depends on the version. XT4, you can customize it. Um, this one has pretty much like uh, presets of how quickly you want the autofocus to be. So that also depends on the environment. So I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. AF point display. I leave it on because I want to see the AF point. Number of focus points. This one depends again on the version of your camera. Some cameras, they only have very little focus point or you can't even change it. For on newer cameras, you have usually two options. If you want to quickly jump between focus point, then you'll choose the less amount of focus point on the screen. It will still cover the same area, but it will be less focus point that you can play around with. But if you want to be more accurate, you can set it to the higher number. I'll just leave it at the higher number for now because I don't think it takes too long for me to move the focus point anyway, especially when I'm doing a portrait photo. Pre-AF, I usually turn it off. I don't even know what, they, what it does. AF illuminator, I believe is the light at the front. When you're auto-focusing, it will just light up. 
So I'm just gonna leave it off. Face eye detection settings. This one is interesting because usually I'll leave it on because I do portrait photos. So I do want to have face and eye detect on. So when the, the subject is closer or close enough for the camera to pick up the face or the eye, I will rely on that most of the time because you want the eyes to be in focus with portraits. But sometimes it can be unreliable, depends on the condition of your environment again. So you can turn it off when it's not that helpful. You can use the single point as I showed you earlier. That I found it a little bit more reliable. So I'll make it a shortcut later to turn it on and off. So don't worry about it. I'll just set it to on right now. Autofocus plus menu focus. I believe this one is for you to override the autofocus with the ring. I usually leave it off. I will do autofocus or menu focus separately. I don't do it together. Focus, menu focus assist, uh, menu focus assist. Uh, this one, I usually just leave it as default because uh, focus peaking, uh, white is fine. It means whatever that is in focus, when you're manually focusing, it will have the white highlight around the object. So I'll just leave it as peak because um, it depends. Some people, they like it to have like a split image, to have like a zoom in image at the corner to show you what's in focus. It's like a zoomed in image, but I use it. Uh, I use menu focus when I am, I mean, I use peak focus when I am doing menu focus. That's the same thing as my video camera. Focus check, just turn it on. So it will check the focus when you are manually focusing and I don't know what this is, to be honest with you. Whatever I don't know, I usually just leave it as default because to be honest with you, there's like so much stuff that you can change on the camera to your liking, but it, based, it depends on your style and it depends on the condition of your environment in order for you to decide. So I'll usually just leave them as default if I don't know what they are. Instant AF settings, this is interesting. AFS, AFC, I usually don't use AFC because a lot of Fujifilm lenses, they have focus breathing. So if you use AFC, the image will go in and out and in and out. It will be like zoom in and zoom out, zoom in and zoom out because of the focus breathing off the lens. So I'll, whatever I don't understand, I'll just leave it at AFS. Depth of field, scale, I leave it as pixel basis. Release focus, priority. I think this one means when you release the shutter button, it will stay in focus of whatever that was previously in focus with. Correct AF frame. Oh, there's a lot of things that I actually don't change. So I don't change that, leave it on. Self timer for you to take photos with the timer. And these, I don't change them, to be honest with you. Um, bracket settings, I usually don't do exposure bracket or film simulation bracketing, because that one is where you to take multiple photos with, I think, three different film simulations. So you will have three JPEGs for you to choose from at the end with one picture. So you don't have to go through the raw conversion to edit them like that. Uh, photometry, this one, if you have face and eye detect on, it will be grayed out because you don't need to change. It will just prioritize the brightness or the exposure of the person's face. So if you turn off face and eye detect, this part will be available. Shutter type, this is really important. So <clears throat> I usually prefer to use electronic shutter because it's quiet or you can go completely silent. And also it doesn't really use up the uh, lifespan of the mechanical shutter. But of course, depends on the processor and the sensor that you have on your Fujifilm camera. The newer ones are better because electronic shutter, you might get into um, basically bending. So because it's reading from the top to the bottom with the sensor and the image at the bottom, if you were doing like a panning shot or someone like moving really quickly from side to side, you might see an image bend. So that's why usually people would prefer mechanical shutter. But sometimes when it's too bright, let's say outside, 
when you are doing like a sun, like a, a like a daylight uh, shoot, when you need higher shutter speed, you might have to go with electronic shutter anyway because some cameras, like the uh, the more basic model, they don't have one over eight thousand of a second for shutter speed. They only have one over four thousand, so you might still need to end up using electronic shutter. So I'll leave it at mechanical and electronic. So the camera will decide which one is suitable for your condition when let's say it's too bright, then it will just switch to electronic. So just let the camera decide. Flicker reduction say, uh, it basically applies to any flickering when you're taking pictures, especially with uh, electronic shutter. I don't think mechanical shutter will introduce flickering. So that is because some lights, uh, let's say LED lights, they have a frequency that might uh, crash into your electronic shutter shutter speed that it will introduce like all these like bends like bright and dark bends on your image so just leave it on as I said whatever I don't think I need to change I don't change it I just leave it as auto ISO auto setting this is really important depends again on your Fujifilm camera but on the X-Pro2 when you set the ISO dial to auto it will give you three options only because you, that means you don't need to change your ISO and it will give you auto one, auto two, auto three. What it does is basically it will let you set the default or I should say lowest ISO settings when it's bright enough, it will just try to get to the lowest and max sensitivity to certain number of ISO, it will just jump between the lowest to the highest and Minimum shutter speed, this is really important because this Fujifilm camera, unless you have the XS10, X-T4, or the X-H1, they have in-body image stabilization, or if your lens has lens or OIS, uh, optical image stabilization, then it will allow you to take pictures even at slower shutter speed. So your handshake or, or the vibration when you're pressing the shutter button might not matter that much, but usually I will keep it at, at least one over one, one two, well, 125 of a second, but I would usually set it to one over 250th of a second of minimum shutter speed. So if you have everything in auto mode, uh, I think you can have your aperture set to a certain number, but if you have shutter speed and ISO to auto, it will only allow you to go as low as one over 250th of a second if you set it like this. Max sensitivity depends on your sensor. As I said, Fujifilm cameras, when you take photos in low light, it doesn't mean that they will introduce a lot of noise. They're more like film grain, and I really like those grains, so I don't really mind shooting at higher ISO. With my X-E2, I will try to keep it below or at maximum 3200 ISO, but with the X-Pro2, I'm not even afraid of setting it to 6,400 ISO because I know this sensor is better in low light anyway. So if you select the auto one, it will follow these criteria. And of course, auto two has another settings page for you to set those ISOs. So I'll just leave it at auto one for now. I don't know what this is. Mount adapter settings. I really don't know what this is, so I'm not gonna touch it. It doesn't really affect my shooting anyway. Wireless communication, this one allows you to connect your camera to your phone to transfer photos, raw photos, JPEGs, or remote control the camera. I don't usually use the app, to be honest with you. If I need to edit a photo, I'll just take out the SD card and transfer it using an adapter or just upload it to my Mac or iPad to edit it. So I don't usually use the Wi-Fi, especially wi if you have an older camera like the Expo 2, you will have to use Wi-Fi. This one doesn't have Bluetooth, I believe, and it doesn't constantly connect to your camera, uh, I mean your phone, so it's really annoying to go through the whole process just to transfer some photos. So that's that. Flash setting, I don't use flash. <laughs> I know it sounds weird, but I don't use flash to, to take photos. I just feel like I'm not professional enough to use like flash for my photography yet, so I don't touch this page. Movie settings, 
Depends again on your firmware or the model of your camera. You might have more settings, uh, especially on the X-T4, X-T3, they have a dedicated page full of things that you can change. For the X-Pro2 or the X-E2 with the previous sensor and processor, you only have really limited amount of things that you can do. I will just set it to 4K 24p. I don't think I'll use the X-Pro2 for videos anyway, except emergency. X-E2, don't even bother because your phone is probably gonna be better than any Fujifilm camera with the X-Trans 2 sensor. This is X-Trans 3 and I don't even want to use it for video. So again, just use it for photos. Mic level adjustment, this one depends if you are using an external mic. I'll just leave it as default because I really don't think I'll use this for video. And user settings. This page, uh, let's go in one by one because they have multiple pages. The first thing, of course, you have the option to format your card. This is a good habit if you are updating firmware, format your card on your, inside your camera to make sure that the format of the card matches what Fujifilm is asking for. Try not to format it on your computer. Do it here. Date and time, you just, oh yeah, I didn't get to change the date and time. Oh, it's actually correct anyway. Probably because I reset just the uh, the user settings, but not the camera settings when I try to reset the camera. Time difference, this is home and basically if you're traveling. If you have the newer camera with Bluetooth connection, I believe when you connect to your phone, it will just sync the time, so that's great. Language. My menu setting, this one is cool because with this newer interface, uh, not on the X-E2 or the one with the X-Trans 2 sensor because it doesn't have a My Menu settings, I believe. You can't really add your own items. I don't add any items like on my Fujifilm cameras because I think the menu is pretty user-friendly already so I know where things are. And if I add in items specifically inside my menu, that means if I jump between cameras or if I'm using someone else's Fujifilm camera, I might rely a lot on the My Menu settings, so I don't touch that. Sensor cleaning, this one, you can have it set up to clean the sensor when the camera is switched off. Usually I just leave it like this. I don't need to clean it when it's on. Reset allows you to reset the camera, and that's what I did before. If you keep going down, you'll jump to the second item off the first page. So this is sound settings. AF, beep volume, I usually keep it off. I don't really need the camera to go beep, beep, beep when I am uh, focusing. Self timer, I think this is good when you're self timing to take a photo, just leave it on unless you want a really quiet kind of photo to be taken. And operation volume, I usually leave it off so I don't hear like sound when I'm changing settings. Shutter volume, this is for you when you are using electronic shutter. So let's say these are the sounds. So sound two, I'll show you sound two first. It's super quiet. So I usually will keep a shutter sound when I am using electronic shutter, but I'll keep it at minimal. If you want completely silent shutter, you will set it to off, but I'll leave it with a sound so I know that I'm taking a picture, <laughs> even with electronic shutter. With mechanical shutter, you will hear it. You will hear a really nice shutter sound. Playback volume, this is when you're playing back, of course, your videos. EVF brightness, I usually leave it to auto because whenever I put my eyes onto the sensor, it will just show me a pretty bright image already. And because it's an EVF, so it shouldn't be uh, bothered by sunlight or anything from the outside. EVF color, this is for you to change the color of the EVF in case if it's off compared to what you see. So um, I usually don't touch that part. LCD brightness, your personal preference, I'll leave it at zero for now. Daylight, if I'm outside, I'll set it to plus two. LCD color, same thing. Image display, this is for you to display the photo that you have taken. For how long, I'll usually keep it at 1.5 seconds, so I can kind of see what I've uh, taken. EVF auto rotate displays. This is for you to rotate the settings like 
when you are taking pictures like these ones. When you rotate the camera, these settings will rotate. Same thing within the EVF. This is one thing I don't like. They will kick you out when you are, when you jump out to taking photos and then jump back to the menu item. It'll usually kick you out and put you back to the top one. So that's something I don't like. And this preview exposure white balance in menu mode, uh, I usually will keep it on because you can see actually how the exposure is when you're using the screen and the electronic viewfinder because you, I think that's what the screen and the electronic viewfinder is for. <laughs> if you don't set it up, it will just show you a completely well exposed white balanced image and you can't really see what your settings is affecting. Let's say shutter speed is making your image darker. You won't see it. So I'll just leave it like that. Preview picture effect. I think this is just to show you the effect of the film simulation. Again, correct me if I'm wrong, but I usually leave this off. I mean, the same as default. So keep it on. Frame guide. Uh, some people use it. I don't. Uh, you can use grid nine or 24 to basically use like rule of third or like symmetry. Rotating playback basically means if you have taken the photo in like a portrait orientation with your camera, when you are playing back your image, it will rotate the portrait photo so it's not sideways, it will be straight up in front of you. I usually leave it off because I kind of like filling the screen with the image, so I'll just leave it off so my Portrait photo, if I use the camera sideways, it will stay sideways. I just rotate the camera to see it. It's not that, that big of a deal. Focus scale units, depends on your country. I use meter. Display custom settings. This is cool because you might not have OVF because X Pro 2, X Pro 1, 2, 3, they all have an OVF, an optical viewfinder. But if you don't have it, don't worry about it. EVF, this is where you can select what is being shown on your screen when you're taking photos. So if you want to use the uh, nine grid frame guide, you can do that. Electronic level, I usually don't use it. And uh, focus frame, the, the little box. AF distance indicator, doesn't really matter if it's like AF, I don't really need it, but I'll just turn it on anyway. Histogram, this is really important to make sure that your photo is well exposed. Live view highlight alert depends on the model of your camera and might or might not have it, but I will definitely turn it on if I have this option because whatever that is overexposed, it will show you as a flashing part of the image just to tell you that that part of the image is definitely overexposed and clipping. So try to avoid seeing any flashing part. So leave it on. Shooting mode, this is great. So you know what you're doing. The menu or aperture priority program mode. Aperture. Shutter speed, ISO, <laughs> definitely leave this on so you know what you're doing. Information background, I really don't know what this is. Like, I don't think I can tell a difference, but I'll just leave it on because it's not really take up any space. Exposure compensation, it's a little scale on the side. You can use digital or scale. Again, depends on the camera. You might not have these options, but definitely have ex uh, ex uh, exposure compensation on because you know how well your photo is exposed using that meter. And it's good to be able to read the meters. I know a lot of cameras, they are so good that you don't really need to worry about exposure. You can basically just have like crazy dynamic range and fix it in post, but try to read the meters. Focus mode, same thing, menu, uh, continuous or single. Photometry, again, if you have face eye detect on, this one will not have anything. It will just show you that you have face and eye detect on. Shutter type, this is good, so you know what kind of shutter you're using. Flash, I don't even use flash, but I'll just leave it on because there's nothing. Continuous mode, I think this is for the drive, for you to use like high, um, high frame rate uh, burst, so you know which mode you're in. Dual IS mode, that means um, if your lens has optical image stabilization, it will show you, but I don't have IBIS on this camera anyway, so I don't know why it's still called dual IS mode. White balance, it's good to know. Film simulation, good to know. Dynamic range, you don't really have to have it on unless you change it all the time. But I'll just leave it on. It's, it doesn't really take up that much space. 
frames remaining. This is really important so you know how many photos you can still take. Image size quality, it's good to know that you are taking a certain quality of image on the screen. Movie mode, record time, this is good to know so you know how much time you have left on your SD card. Battery level, of course, you want to leave it on. So most of the things are on. OVF, this is my first time seeing this too, but it seems like they have similar stuff. So I'll just turn on the same thing. Exposure, it's good. Oh, it's exactly the same thing. Okay, so same settings as EVF and LCD. Large indicators mode, basically changing the text bigger. And this is for LCD and that's for EVF. I just need it to be regular, that's fine. So I don't touch that part. Focus lever settings. I think this is, oh, actually I don't know what this is. But that's okay. As I said, leave it the way it is if you don't know what it is. All right, this is how I do my photos or at least this is how I learn because if I don't know what they do, usually they will have a user-friendly choice or option selected already for the users. So as long as I don't touch the default ones, it should be safe. Edit, save, quick settings. This is really important. This is the Q menu basically. And I kind of want to have my XE2 as a sample because I want to set it up exactly the way between cameras so I know because on all Fujifilm cameras, if you have the 16 grid, I think 16, eight and four or three, I can't remember. It will have similar options among all the camera models. So if you have one camera set up in certain ways that you are familiar with on the quick menu, definitely set them the same between cameras. So just give me one minute, I'll go get my XE2. Okay, I have my XE2 with me right now beside me and I'll just change these the same thing as my XE2. The first square, you, you don't have to follow this part. This is basically my personal preference, but these are the settings that I usually want to see in the quick menu. At least even if I don't change it in the quick menu that often, I still want to see what I'm having. So this one is shutter. This one is dynamic range. This one I have it in film simulation. I'm so used to the D-pad on the X-E2, so that's why I'm still using it on the X-Pro2. The X-T4 has two options too, so this is not noise reduction. For me, it's highlight tone. For your information, the way I set up the quick menu is basically for the Fujifilm recipes that I always follow on Fuji, Fuji Weekly website. They have a lot of recipe to mimic different film look on your Fuji film camera. So having these on the quick menu, it's actually really easy for me to follow or adjust my camera the same way as the Fuji film Weekly options. So if you are wondering, this is color. Oh wait, where's color? Color, it's here. I think this is sharpness. Yep. Sharpness. And this one is phase I detect, I believe. Oh, no, no, no. This one's photo photometry. It's just almost the same icon, so that's why I'm kind of confused. Uh, photo oh, oh, it's right below. Oh, interesting. They have different icons amount uh, between the cameras. So that's why I'm kind of confused. And this is for white balance. Again, you don't have to follow this part if you don't want to follow my custom settings. Set it to whatever way you want. This one I have is set to ISO usually. Where's ISO? Oh, interesting. They don't have ISO on the X-Pro2 as an option, unless I just can't see it for whatever reason. Oh, that's very interesting. Okay, um, if that's the case, I'm gonna set this as something else. 
Oh, okay. Huh. All right, I'll set it as AF mode. Nope, actually the next one is AF mode. Never mind. Again, I want to set it the same as what I have on my XE2. So I really don't know what to set this for now. I will noise reduction. Nope, I don't really have anything that I want to set. Maybe grain effect then? Sure. And at the bottom, on my XE2, I have the movie or video settings here. So I can quickly change the mode of taking a video. This one is, I think I don't have much here at the bottom for the XE2. Just for your information, the bottom row, it's actually gonna be fixed even if you change the items at the top, amount different settings, uh, presets, it will stay the same. This one doesn't even have what I have on the XC2, which is IS mode, image stabilization mode. So I think I'm just going to leave it like that. The, this is for you to change the face eye detect option. And I have this one set to self timer. Do I have self timer on the I should have a self timer. I just saw it earlier and I got rid of it. Right here. And this one is always EVF and LCD brightness. So it, I can quickly change the brightness of the display of my camera when I am doing a shoot. So that's that. That's all I need the XE4, uh, XE2 for. So I. Again, this is how I set up. Again, you don't have to follow this. Function settings, this one depends on the camera model that you have. You might have more buttons than what I have here, but I believe the X-Pro2 should have a lot of buttons compared to a lot of cameras already. Function one, a lot of people with older cameras, they don't have a movie mode where you can go in. I actually like to have a movie mode. For some reason, this camera doesn't have it. It's not in the drive mode for some other cameras, they are in the drive mode. I believe the XE3 is in the drive mode, they, but they have the function button right beside the shutter button as the movie start and record, a start and stop recording mode. I usually don't do it. I will set this to white balance because I want to set it up as the way, the same as my other camera. Function two, this one is at the front. Uh, this one is only available for the X Pro series with the uh, lever where you can change the EVF, the OVF. Maybe I'll set it to the movie button because this one is really hard to press. I'll set it to the movie button because I don't have this button on every camera anyway. So I'll just set it like that just in case if I accidentally bump into it a lot, then I'll change it to something else. The AEL button, I think I'll change it to I want to change it to film simulation, I believe, or maybe I should change it to autofocus mode. Let's see. Or focus area maybe for now. And this one, film simulation, it's the same as my other cameras. And this is white balance. I usually set it to face and eye detect so I can quickly turn it on and off if I don't need it. Where is, yep, right here. And this one, let me think, what do I have on the XC2? Let me double check. Oh, I actually have it set as ISO. See if you have the camera set to auto ISO, you don't really have to do anything. <laughs> so anyway, I'll just set it to ISO. And the rear dial is for you to zoom in on the image that you're looking at on your screen before you take the picture for 
focus peaking and stuff. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, you can press into this dial. Again, if you don't have the option, don't, don't do it, don't touch it. I think I'll just keep it as focus check so I can punch in to the image. Command dial settings, I usually set, I usually have my back dial, I believe on my X-T4, I have the back dial as ISO and the front dial as shutter speed, but I have the X-E2 right now, which only has one dial at the back and that's what shutter speed, so I think I'll flip it, just not to confuse myself. So this is now my shutter speed option. If I set the shutter speed dial to T mode, if you guys want to learn about the dials on Fujifilm camera, let me know in the comment section below and I'll make another video. Shutter speed operation, I'll just leave it on. ISO dial settings, uh, on this camera it has a high mode, so you can set the highest ISO settings. I think I'll just leave it at the lower number, which is <laughs> the first one, so I don't get like super noisy image. ISO dial settings, there's also a low, so you can go all the way down to 100. I'll just leave it like that. Shoot without lens, this is for you to use older vintage lenses where there's no electronic contact onto your camera. It will not let the camera know that there's a lens on it. So if you want to use vintage lenses, turn this on so ca the camera will actually take a picture even without the lens. But I don't have any vintage lenses right now, so I'll just leave it off. Shoot without card, I'll turn it off for sure, just in case if I forgot to bring any SD card or put any SD card in the camera, I might start taking photos and it will show you that it's kind of taking photos, but it's actually not saving on anything, so just turn it off so you don't accidentally take photos without SD card. <laughs> focus ring, this is for you to change the direction of the focus ring counterclockwise or clockwise. I usually flip it because of how I focus with menu lenses on my cinema cameras. And this one is to set up the AEL and AFL button that I don't usually use that much, so that's totally fine. I don't touch these. Auto power off just to save power. Performance, you have high performance, standard economy. This is for you to re change the refresh rate off the screen when you are using the camera. If you want high refresh rate, it will use more battery, but it will look nicer. It will be more fun to use, I would say, because it's not going to be laggy. But if you're really low in battery life, then go to economy. Auto power save. I really don't know what this does, but uh, I'll just leave it off if it's off. Frame number, this is how the data is saved. So if you want to change your file name to a certain way, then do it. Uh, if you have dual card slot like the X-Pro2 or X-T series camera, X-Pro series or X-T series, you have two cards, you can set it to sequential. That means the first card, when it's filled, it will jump to the second card to continue. And backup, this is basically recording the same image or video onto both cards. Make sure that you have similar card speed or if the best have same card speed so they're backing up the same speed or else it will be kind of weird for the camera having to write on one card at a faster speed and the other one at a slower speed. So I usually set it to sequential raw plus raw and JPEG or slash JPEG means one card is going to record raw, the other card is going to record JPEG. But I'll just go sequential so if I fill the first card I can use the second card. Switch slot, this is basically just to switch the slot off the card that you're, you're currently using. I just totally just kicked myself out. It's okay. So I'm just going to switch the slot. You can switch the slot when you're actually looking at the playback. So you can switch slot by pressing onto the menu button and you can switch it there. So I don't touch it when I am taking photos or videos, unless I really need to jump to the second card. Folder, just for you to find the photos and videos. Copyright info, this is for you to enter your name, so you people know that there's an author. Um, I'm not going to set it right now. That's what copyright. Wireless setting, this is for you to set up your camera to connect to your phone or tablet, smart devices, using Wi-Fi. This one only has Wi-Fi. But for the newer models, they do have Bluetooth, so it's less energy consuming or battery life consuming, and it's also more convenient because it stays connected, I believe, and I don't touch these things. 
So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how I set up my new Fujifilm camera. The reason why, again, I made this video or I want to make this video is because I just got a used X-Pro2 for myself. I need to set it up the way I like it. And thank you so much for following me throughout this setup journey. I hope it helps you to set up your Fujifilm camera as well. If you have different suggestion on how to set up your like the Fujifilm cameras, let me know in the comment section below. I will really, really appreciate it. And for some options, I didn't touch them because I don't know what they are. I apologize because I'm still new uh, to photography and I don't know what they do, so I don't touch those options. Usually, if you don't touch them, they should be safe. So this is how I set up my X-Pro2 or my other Fujifilm cameras. I will or I might have made a video talking about why I got the X-Pro2 already. So check that out if it's already out. If not, stay tuned. And the reason why I got the X-Pro2 but not the X-E4 or I actually sold my X-T4 and got the X-Pro2. I will explain in that video. So definitely check it out or stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or a comment, leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next one.